Hello everybody, today we will have a walk around the Abbey of Farfa. Here we are, about 50 kilometers away from Rome, surrounded by suggestive hills and olive tree fields. Today it's cold and a bit windy, so forgive the rustling sound of the wind. It's time to buy a new microphone, eh? <laughs> The abbey itself it says to have been built somewhere between the years 560-570 after Christ, on the ruins on an old Roman temple dedicated to the goddess Ceres. After the Lombards destroyed the first abbey, it was rebuilt in 680 after Christ with the help of the Duke of Spoleto and Pope John VII. The abbey's strategic position made sure that the abbey will become one of the most prestigious and powerful religious centers of medieval Europe. Thanks to a visit by Charles Lemain in the year 800 after Christ, right before being crowned Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, the Farfa Abbey became an imperial abbey with direct contact with emperors. The little town built around the monastery, once richly inhabited, consists now of not more than 40 people, many of which have little handicraft shops or art studios. Let's see what we have down there. As anywhere in the region, and Italy for that matter, here you can also buy self-produced olive oil and cheeses. Every fair Sunday of the month, the cloister of the Farfa Abbey becomes a place where the reference Per le Vie del Borgo, along the alley of the town, takes place. A colorful market of antiques, vintage collections, handicrafts and design. House of Nuns of St. Bridget Especially during Christmas, there are many events organized around the Abbey, like classical music concerts and choirs in the cathedral. The abbey got its name for the river Farfa, a river flowing in the nearby valley. Thank you. 
ಬ್ರೌನ್ಸ್ ಜೀರ್ವಳಿ ಗ್ರಾಫಿಕ್ ಆರ್ಟ್ ಫೋಟೋಗ್ರಫಿ ಪರ್ಸನಲೈಸ್ ಗಡ್ಜೆಟ್ಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಕ್ರಾಫ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಷನ್ಸ್ the specialties of the town little side note here A bar in Italy is not a place just to get alcohol, but also where you can get coffee, very good coffee, and tabacchi, which stands for tobacco, so you can buy cigarettes here if you, if you smoke, you mean. The art shop. the pasta of the prior of the Farfa Abbey. Textile Art Laboratory So this is the main gate to the cathedral. I'll go there later. Here you have various art studios and antique shops, unfortunately all closed at the moment. This is St. Benedict, 
488 to 548 after Christ, also known as Benedict of Nursia, an Italian Christian monk, writer, theologian, who is still venerated across the whole Christian world. Besides being the patron saint of the Abbey, he is also the patron saint of Europe. The Park of Davi, with artwork made by local artists. In the Abbey, there also used to be a Jesuit school, and in the 1950s and 1960s, many rich Romans would send their children to study at the Abbey. The village in Posteria in Farfa Wine and Food.
This is the end of the Borgo. At the end of this road there is a big parking lot and the roads to go to Rome. When the abbey reached its maximum power, it controlled more than 600 monasteries and churches, 132 castles, 6 fortified towns and about 300 villages, the richest and most powerful abbey of medieval Europe. However, from the 16th century of the Farfa Abbey started to lose power and influence. Eventually, in 1928, it was declared national monument, saving it from ruin. Little shops with ancient costumes and modeling. Istiesque quem tibi promiseram locus, which is Latin for this is the place I promise you. The words of the Virgin Mary addressed to St. Thomas of Maurien to indicate to him the place where he had to reveal the present monastery. The facade of the cathedral is built in Romanesque style. The bell tower is one of the very few examples of Carolingian architecture in Italy. The late Romanesque portal is made by Anselmo de Perugia in the late uh, 1400 depicting the Madonna with child being crowned by two angels between San Benedict and Scholastica. Unfortunately, I wasn't allowed to film inside the cathedral. <laughs> but if you have the chance, you should definitely check it out. As it was built over different periods of time, you can find fine examples of late Romanesque style, Baroque interiors and Renaissance style chapels. The counter facade with the last judgment by the Flemish painter Dirk Barents 1561 
in the chapels there are paintings made by Horacio Gentileschi and the first masterpiece by his famous daughter Artemisia Gentileschi. This is the entrance of the monastery itself, where monks of the Benedictine order live. Benedictine Abbey of Farfa, Cassinesi monks. Besides the monastery itself, there is also a pharmacy here. Two cloisters, one of which dates back to Lombard times, a refectory and a library which dates back to the 8th century. As you just saw from the menu at the entrance, there is also a restaurant, which by the way, serves excellent coffee. A little shop selling locally handmade honey, jams, soap, cosmetics, homemade liquors, tea, perfumes, etc. Did I tell you they serve excellent coffee? They do. This is the backside of the textile shop, where they make textiles using old traditional techniques. Artist Studio, Ceramics.
Okay, this way just leads to the olive tree fields. Well, that was it. That was the Borgo of the Farfa Abbey. Thanks for watching. Don't forget a thumbs up or two. Subscribe. See you on the next walk. <laughs>